Day to night transitions are easily one of the coolest effects you can create, especially when it comes to real estate. Recently, I got to take a trip to Italy and film a luxury villa, but most of the remarks were about my smooth day to night transitions. So that's why I want to create a tutorial for you to show you how you can do it inside of DaVinci Resolve. And because you guys have been asking, I've also turned these transitions into presets so you can download them for yourself and save yourself a bunch of time. And thank you to Audio for sponsoring today's video. More on that later. Let's get into the video. Quickly, before we actually get inside of DaVinci Resolve to start editing these videos, I quick have to explain how to shoot them. It's super, super easy. So to start, you're just gonna find your shot that you wanna take during the daytime. So for example, with this pool clip right here, I took a little iPhone clip, told myself where to stand and where to walk, and then I made sure to line up this umbrella right in the center of my frame, both in the morning and at night. So if I play this back, you can see that I took the full take, I didn't stop halfway through inside my shot I walked all the way forward till I was right at the umbrella so that I have all this extra footage to work with this way the shots line up perfectly you can do multiple takes during the day and night so that you can combine the two takes that look the closest but I actually only took one take for each case and it worked out perfectly fine all right, so to start, we just gotta get our footage lined up roughly. So on my clip here, I'm just using I and O to set my in and out points, and I'm gonna drag just the video onto my timeline here. And I want the transition to happen right about here. So I'll trim that up, I'll zoom in a little bit here, and I'm just gonna take reference. I'm right before the rock hits the right of the screen. So now I'm gonna go to my exterior shot, open it up, and I'm gonna find sort of roughly that same spot. So maybe right there, I'm gonna hit in, set my out point and drag my clip in. And now, as you can see, we already have a rough cut and it's actually very, very close. So the way that we're gonna line it up a little bit better is we're just gonna take our clip here. We're gonna zoom all the way into the timeline and drag it over one frame, just like so. We're gonna set our playhead here and we're gonna turn the opacity down. And now we can zoom into the clip and see how close we are. So as you can see uh, by this light pillar, we're actually very, very close. But the way that I'm just gonna fix that is I'm just gonna drag the clip forward and backwards until that light pillar matches up a little bit better. So let's extend it right there. Now my light pillar is lined up perfectly, but the thing is the light pillar is not the main focus in the shot. So the thing that you really want to look out for are your main leading lines in your video. So even this rock is not super important. It's more important that the pool lines and the house lines and especially the horizon lines with these trees line up because that's what's going to make your day to night transition smooth or not smooth. So to make this a little bit smoother yet, I'm just going to use the transform controls and move this over just so it lines up perfectly. So again, now if we turn the opacity off and on, we can See, it's pretty much perfect. There's a little bit of movement. Our pillar is not perfect, but that is a okay. Now with our clip, I'm just gonna hold Alt and press the down key to make sure that it doesn't move around at all. We can zoom out of our timeline and now we have a nice rough cut of our clip, but you can see that there's some uh, transparency going on because obviously we moved our clip up. So let's just zoom that in uh, the minimum amount we can. So 1.01 .01. and we have to do the exact same thing to the first clip so that that lines up perfectly. Now we are going to add our first transition and we're gonna be working on the Luma fade here. So let's go into video transitions. We're gonna go all the way down into fusion transitions and then open the cross dissolve and drag it on. Let's right click the transition and open it in the fusion page. Inside the fusion page, let's right click the cross dissolve and ungroup the dissolve. Now let's go into empty space and add another dissolve node. To give us a little bit more control over how the LumaFade works, we're gonna actually add a control to this dissolve node and it's super, super easy. Let's right click the dissolve up top right in the inspector and edit controls. Now we're just gonna write in here video one, slash video two. And this is just picking the Luma source for the transition. Make sure it's set to number and as well that it goes onto the controls page. And then on the input control, let's switch it to checkbox control and hit okay. This is going to add this control right here. Let's right click the background and foreground, hit expression and drag this pick right here to that checkbox. Now when you click this, you can see it controls the background slash foreground. We'll get back to this a little bit later. After the dissolve, let's add a simple blur 
blur node and turn the blur all the way down to zero. And then after that, in empty space, let's add a bitmap node. And let's plug the blur into the bitmap, just like so. And let's change the bitmap from alpha channel to luminance. And let's plug the bitmap into the pink input of the dissolve one. And now with our media one, which again is the original clip, the day shot, we're gonna plug that into the yellow input of the dissolve two. And we're gonna plug the media two, which is the night, into the green input. Now we're getting pretty close to setting up this transition. Now let's just go into the dissolve one and change the operation mode from dissolve to gradient wipe. And now, as you can see, if we play through our clip, you can see we have a nice luma fade going on. In this instance, it's starting with the brightest portions of video two and fading them on first. So you can see the lights are fading on first. But what we can do is we can invert the bitmap and we can change how this dissolves. So now it's starting with the sky and doing the lights last. But on the dissolve two, we can also change the video one slash video two input. And now we're getting the dissolve that I like. So it's starting with the bright lights of the second clip and fading them on first, and then doing the grass and the darkest parts last. And this gives you this nice gradient wipe on the sky. Now these controls are fully customizable. So you can select video one or video two, and then on the bitmap, you can invert it or not invert it. You have a little bit more control, but if you don't like how much detail is going on, so let's say in the sky here, the gradient wipe is adding a bit of noise. This blur node is going to fix that. We can just increase the blur ever so slightly, and now it's smoothing out that transition. And lastly, to make this look a little bit more pleasing, we're also going to ease it in. So on the dissolve one, let's go into the modifiers tab in the top right, change the curve from linear to easing, and I'm gonna set the in and out to quad on both of them. Now on the edit page, we can extend the transition as much as we'd like, and it will adjust accordingly. And if we play this back, you can see we have a beautiful luma fade transition going from day to night. But as I mentioned earlier, on all of my other videos, I've had tons of requests to turn my effects into presets. So I've actually partnered up with Jake Whip, creator of Whip Templates, to turn these into usable edit page friendly templates. Now, if you don't know who Jake Whip is, he's an incredible DaVinci Resolve YouTuber. You should definitely check him out. And he's also got an incredible pack of templates that I actually use all the time. But let's look at this Luma Fade transition we created together. So instead of having to open up Fusion every single time, now you can just go into Video Transitions. There's going to be a new folder called Van Beek Films, and there's going to be the Luma Fade transition. So let's just drag that up right onto our timeline, and now we have the transition. So it's already set to the settings that I like most, and that most likely you'll like most, but you can change them however you'd like. So let's increase the transition duration a little bit, and let's take a look at what it's created for us. So we have a beautiful, nice Luma Fade transition, just like the one we created before, but in one simple step. Now we still have the choices to choose the inputs. So we can choose the Luma source of video one or video two, and we can fade the brights or the darks first. So we have full controls on the edit page and that blur feature that I mentioned is right here. So we can turn up the softness a little bit to get rid of some noise and that's going to look a little bit better. And below that, we can change the easing controls as we desire. So obviously this preset can save you a ton of time. If you wanna get it yourself, my PayHip link is down below in the description. You can find it there on my store, as well as some other options and a free light wrap tool if you're interested. Now let's get into the warp transition. But if you're looking for good music and sound effects, then maybe audio is for you, the sponsor of today's video. I use audio for literally every single one of my projects and every single one of my YouTube videos. They have music, sound effects, and cutting edge AI tools that help you save hours of time when finding the right songs. And their music comes from real artists and real people, and it sounds incredible. And you can use their music for personal or client work, whether that's going on YouTube or Instagram or even TV channels. And they even offer a lifetime subscription for their music, which is just a one-time payment for unlimited downloads. Now, if you wanna take advantage of all the AI tools they offer, maybe the pro plan is for you. Now, if you wanna get an incredible deal on either the lifetime plan or the pro plan, the link is down below in the description. Use my codes and you will get a massive discount. I'd recommend you at least go to their website to check out their music and if you like it, then maybe audio is your next music platform. 
Okay, now let's go to the warp transition. So let's grab our day shot first, which is this guy right here. We'll drag that onto the timeline. I'm just gonna take a look at where I wanna cut it, which is maybe right there. We'll cut that excess off. Uh, and I'm just looking at the frame here and it looks like I'm sort of halfway through this door on the right side. So let's line up that out point on this other clip here as well. So the in point should be sort of right on halfway through that door, maybe right around there. Let's set the out. Let's drag that on just like so. So let's take a look and it's a bit of a rough cut. It's not as pretty as the first one. But with the warp transition, that's actually perfect because we can just hide those imperfections quite easily. But let's still do our due diligence and line it up the best we can. So I'm dragging it over one frame. I'm gonna turn the opacity down uh, just like so. And it looks like the umbrellas are roughly the same size. So that tells me that I am in the right positioning for the video. So let's just move the umbrella up into place because that is the center of the frame, just like so. And now we've got a pretty good lineup. Now let's take the clip, press Alt and the down key to put it into place. Let's turn the opacity back up. And obviously we need to get rid of this transparency. So let's increase the size to 1.03. Let's do the same on the first clip, just like so. And now if we play this back, we've got a pretty smooth transition already. The they're lining up quite nice. Now, instead of diving into an actual transition for this effect, we're just gonna use an adjustment clip to make it a little bit easier. So let's go into our toolbox, let's go into effects and add an adjustment clip. I'm gonna hover right over this cut mark right here and I'm gonna go back 12 frames. And then I'm gonna go forward 12 frames and then I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna select my adjustment clip, press M on my keyboard, that's gonna add a marker. Now, if I ever accidentally move this, I can line it up quite easily. Let's go into the fusion page. Now let's add a warper node. With the warper node added, let's go into the warp mode and change it from curves to points and then go into advanced options and change the limits from distant to around the edges. This is just pinning the edges. Now I'm gonna take a pin right here and drag it towards the middle. Same thing in the left bottom and the top left and the top right. And as you can see, I'm sort of just pinching everything to the center of the screen, just like so. And if I slide the warp strength up and down, you can see the pinch effect happening. Now let's animate it. So let's go to frame zero, put the warp strength at zero, go to frame 12, which is where our cut happens, put the warp strength at one and go to the last frame and put the warp strength back at zero. Now let's open our spline editor, open warp strength, zoom to fit by selecting this icon. I'm gonna hit Control A to select all the points and hit S. Now with Control selected on my keyboard, I'm gonna grab this spline right here and I'm gonna turn it down so that we're creating a peak right in the middle. This is gonna give it a little bit of a pop effect. Now, if we take a look at this back on the edit page, you can see our warp transition works perfectly. So we got a little pop and it goes to the next frame and it hides any imperfections because there's a little bit of movement in the shot. Now, this looks really good and it's reusable because you can move this adjustment clip wherever you'd like in your project. But again, partnering with Jake Whip, we've turned this into a preset. So once you've downloaded the warp transition, let's go into video transitions, go into Van Beek films and grab the warp transition. Let's drag it onto our timeline, just like so. And in here, again, we have controls over easing, but we have a bunch of different warps to use. So to look at the first one, it's just a simple warp. It's just a little flick. Let's extend the time a little bit. It'll adjust automatically. And there's a bunch of different warp options. So this one's a little bit different. There's some stronger warps, some more extreme options. And obviously, again, we have full control over the easing. And this warp transition is also available on my store. So you can head down below to the link to my PayHip store and get the transition for yourself. Once you've downloaded it from the store, you'll get a zip file. Let's take the zip file and just extract it. We can just leave that in the downloads for right now. And then inside this file, you'll see a DRFX file. Now let's just double click the DRFX file. It's going to open this pop-up inside of DaVinci Resolve. Yours will look a little bit different because I already have the effect installed. Yours will just say install instead of overwrite. But either way, let's just hit overwrite or install for your case. And now in the effects panel inside of video transitions, you'll see Van Beek Films right there and you'll see the transition you just installed and you can drag drop super, super easy. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate the support on the channel and can't wait to make more content. If there's any other effects that you'd like me to create a tutorial on, please let me know down below in the comments and I will get started on that as soon as possible. Thank you again also to Audio for sponsoring this video and I'll see you guys next time.